Good Wednesday morning to you. So it's our Wednesday sneak peek. It feels like it's been a really long time since I have done this with you. Um, we're going to look at four different texts this week and uh, in, in preparation for Sunday morning. Uh, the first one comes from Genesis 32. This is verses 22 to 31. And it's the story that we likely know. It's the one of Jacob wrestling with a stranger who becomes God, right? Um, not that he becomes God, but he doesn't, he's unaware of who the stranger is. And there's some great details on that text. And so I encourage you to familiarize yourself with it because that's definitely going to um, be part of our message that we hear on Sunday morning. Our psalm is Psalm 121. This is one of my favorite psalms. It's one that I use frequently at the bedside uh, when someone is at just an uncertain time of their life or maybe even at the end of their life. You know, I look to the hills from where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord. As we live in the valley of the Willamette, um, we can look to the hills all around us. And, and um, are we seeing God? Are we seeing God at work? Uh, not only on the mountaintops, but um, as we are in the valley, valley, do we see God in the valley with us? So Psalm 121 is a great psalm of reflection. The gospel text is Luke 18, it's verses 1 through 8, and Jesus is again telling parables. Uh, he's telling stories that uh, help us to understand better how God's at work and what God's doing as God's kingdom comes here on earth as it is in heaven. But the, the text I want to focus on for our time as this sneak peek is really 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 3 through 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 14 through chapter 4, verse 5. Now, I, I didn't select the Timothy text for our Sunday morning. As you know, we don't always read the whole pericope. That's all of the text assigned for the day. Um, our schedule and the timing just makes it kind of hard to get everything in. And, and I did this a few weeks ago and I got booed. Um, I didn't pick the text from Timothy. And, and the reason being is because Timothy has everything in it. Um, it's such an en en encompassing um, perspective of what faith is all about. And, and so I, I honestly feel like the Timothy texts um, limit our ability to sit with the other texts because it kind of answers all of the questions, right? Uh, Timothy's the, the kid in class you don't want to call on because it's not going to allow for the other kids to really sit and, and, and find their own conclusion or get to the same place in a different way. Uh, Timothy lays it all out. Now, all of the texts this Sunday focus on really this, this idea or this question. What does our relationship with God look like? What kind of relationship do we have with God? And, and through various ways, um, each writer, each, ch each chapter, each book is getting us to uh, open our perspective. Um, no matter how developed your faith life is, there is still room for growth. There's a, a wonderful uh, a saying that, you know, if you're not growing, you're dying, right? And that's, we see that in creation. Um, things don't just stay the same. They're, they're either growing or they're dying. And the same is true for us in our life, especially in our life of faith. We, we need to keep growing. We need to keep challenging ourselves and be challenged by God. And 2 Timothy kind of um, lays it all out of what that looks like. So I'm just going to go through this a little bit and, and uh, highlight a couple things as we, as we read through it. So it's 2 Timothy 3. It begins in verse 14. It says, But as for you, continue to work on what you have learned firmly believing, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. Timothy's, uh, this, this um, chapter in Timothy is reminding us that, first of all, faith is ongoing. Uh, we receive something in faith, most of us as children, not all. Uh, we come to faith at a certain stage of our life. Um, we certainly can agree that no matter how young or old we might be, when we are introduced to faith, we are all spiritual children, right? 
And, and so faith begins uh, as a seed. It begins small and it continues to grow. And, and that's a gift. We have to value that. Um, I think one thing that's super important about this text that kind of gets us ready for Sunday is to first of all acknowledge that no matter where we are in our faith development, it has value to the community. Think about that. Children who are coming, those who are new seeking um, some understanding that, that they never were taught beforehand, uh, those who have grown up in the church, those who call themselves cradle, cradle Lutherans or cradle Christians, uh, each one of us has value for one another. That's an important uh, subtext in this passage that we so often take for granted. And, and so uh, first, we're reminded that faith is a developmental process. And second, we're given the plumb line, which is that of Scripture. Scripture is used. Scripture is inspired by God and used to help us. And re read what, what uh, some of these things the, these standards are, right? Teaching, reproof, correction, training in righteousness, uh, so that we know that we belong to God. That's identity. This is what scripture is meant to do. And this is an important element. As you think about your relationship with God, if when you read scripture, uh, you only read judgment, you only read what a terrible person you are, uh, you're not really reading the entirety of scripture. Um, and how you read scripture is indicative of the relationship you have with God. So think about the last time you read scripture or how you read scripture. How does God speak to you through scripture? Is it really the voice of God or is it your own voice? Is it your own inability to forgive or, or to embrace or, or even to um, be excited and, and to be challenged in a way that you don't let anyone else excite you or challenge you? As we get into chapter 4, there's just a few verses here. So it's chapter 4 through verse 5. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message, be persistent, whether it is time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, encourage with utmost patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachings to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, be sober, endure suffering, do the work of the evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. Now, for the most part, the second passage is reminding us our call, our vocation. No matter what you're getting up to do today, no matter what your office space looks like, whether you are in a business or you are in a classroom, whether your office has changed to your kitchen table or the sanctuary of your home, you are being called to proclaim the kingdom of God. And, and, and you're supposed to be persistent. Uh, you're supposed to convince, rebuke, encourage. You're supposed to have patience and teaching. Um, and, and then there's this caution. There's this reminder that, that there's going to come a time when people aren't going to want to listen. They're going to cling to that which makes them feel good. Now, now here's another caution that, that I, I feel like has to be named. Because scripture has been used to argue positions as much as any secular writing. In fact, I might argue that sometimes the cherry picking of verses have been used to argue personal political ideologies and platforms more than any other secular writing. So when, when we are reminded in this text that we are to use the word of God, inspired by God, uh, we're not just called to use certain verses that make our argument valid. We're called to sit in the narrative. And to sit in the narrative of scripture is to be challenged by it. The reality is scripture does not have one clear response to virtually anything we deal with in this world social or otherwise. But scripture always points us to Christ. So how is Christ at work in the challenges of the day? How is Christ at work in the tough conversations? How is Christ at work as we navigate life in this world? Now we are called to cling to the word of God, the whole narrative, and, and to have patience and, and to allow it to convince, rebuke, and encourage for those for whom we are speaking with and for us as well. 
When's the last time scripture convinced you? When's the last time scripture rebuked you? When's the last time you found an encouraging word in scripture? Again, the challenge is not just to look at one verse and say, oh, that's my verse and that's what God means for it and it fits right into what I desire. The challenge is to read the whole and to seep in it and to be challenged by it and, and frustrated with it the same way it builds us up and encourages us. I was having a great conversation last weekend at the women's retreat. Someone was talking about a story in 2 Kings that is, is rather horrific. And, and, and we're kind of getting down in the weeds about the violence that occurs in the Old Testament. Uh, the reality is a lot of people don't want to read the Old Testament anymore because of the violence, violence against women, violence against nation. Um, but, but that's part of our narrative as well. And what we experience in the Old Testament is the reality of the brokenness of this world, something that none of us can escape from. No matter how faithful we might be, no matter how much we might read our Bible, we cannot escape from the brokenness of this world because part of that brokenness is in ourselves. But how is God at work in that brokenness? That's what we read in the Old Testament. And that's what we read in Scripture. How is God at work in our brokenness and in those around us? The last verse of this passage, verse 5, always, As for you, be sober, endure suffering, work, do the work of an evangelist. This is, this is the encouragement. If you subscribe to the nature that Paul is writing to Timothy, this is Paul's encouragement. You know, If Paul's writing this, he is in his second imprisonment in Rome at this time. And all that he's endured and in all of the, the trials and tribulations that he has endured for the sake of professing Christ. No matter what we face in our life, God's word at the end of the day is giving us a, a word of encouragement. Keep doing it. Keep moving. And, and it's not just us. It's keep moving in relationship with the one who has created us, redeemed us, and sanctified us. So that is the sneak peek for this week. We're going to be talking about our relationship with God this weekend. And we're going to focus on some of the other texts as it feeds into this, but but this is a great text to prepare us and get us ready for how God might speak to us. Hope you're having a good week. Can't wait to see you on Sunday.